Welcome to the TEA presentation on unpacking commissioner rules on reporting child abuse or neglect, including trafficking of a child. My name is Abby Rodriguez, and I'm the state coordinator for military connected and at risk students in the highly mobile and at risk student programs division, and I will be your presenter today. There are a number of new laws and training requirements for educators to increase their awareness on preventing, identifying, and reporting human trafficking. TEA, in partnership with Title IV Part A Statewide School Safety Initiative, ESC 14, ESC 12, and the Office of the Governor's Child Sex Trafficking Team is launching a series of webinars to support ESCs and LEAs with the implementation in the 2020-2021 school year. To kick off the series, we're hosting the first Zoom webinar in the series for ESCs to unpack the requirements of the policy updates and equip ESCs with new resources, information, and tools to support LEAs. So some of the objectives for today's presentation is to increase the knowledge of updated mandatory child abuse and neglect reporting policy to include human trafficking prevention and awareness. Learn key components and strategies for implementation and promote the well-being, or excuse me, promote student safety and well-being, and learn about resources and tools available to assist Texas schools in fulfilling the new requirements. We created the statewide webinar series after hearing from ESC leadership that they would like to unpack the commissioner rule requirements to ensure they are providing LEA leadership and staff with the appropriate information for all components relating to child abuse, neglect, and human trafficking. We also wanted to acknowledge some increased risks and vulnerabilities of child abuse and neglect, including human trafficking, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Amid the pandemic, reports to the child abuse hotline have dropped significantly. Last we heard, it was almost a 30% drop. And so some of the things that our students are experiencing are, again, due to school closures, social and physical isolation and lack of normal peer socialization, disruption of routines, and please keep in mind, home is not safe for all students. We also have learned that domestic violence has increased in the home. There's also been increased burdens with economic hardship caretaking of siblings or other family members, fewer available resources and supports, and alcohol or drug misuse. Some additional challenges include quarantines and hospitalizations and death, not just due the, to the pandemic, but also due to child abuse and neglect. Students are also spending more time at home, and now that the school year is upon us, they've spent more time online for not only education, but entertainment and connection. And so educators should also see that there might be declines with their students regarding their social skills, their coping skills, and their resiliency. So here's an overview for the presentation regarding human trafficking prevention and awareness. We'll unpack training for superintendents and board of trustees. We'll also unpack training for school employees. We'll unpack some of the prevention education for students and policies and protocols for responding to abuse and trafficking. Before we begin unpacking the commissioner rule, we wanted to give you some historical context of child abuse law and policy throughout the years. In 2009, Jenna's law required districts to adopt and implement policies addressing sexual abuse of children to be included in campus improvement plans and informational handbooks. Jenna's law also required teacher, student, and parent awareness of child sexual abuse. In 2011, Texas state law included other maltreatment 
and added prevention techniques to policy requirements. State law also codified annual training requirements for school personnel, and this was the first year child abuse is defined to include trafficking. In 2013, commissioner rules included that training for all school employees must begin in the 2014-2015 school year. Commissioner rules also required mandatory posting of child abuse hotline in schools, also known as the no-go tell posters. And the rise to the challenge curriculum was created by the Human Trafficking Task Force, which is a task force that TEA is a part of. In 2015, TEA policy governing reports must include reports related to trafficking of a child. The Office of the Governor also created their child sex trafficking team. In 2019, as a result of the 86th Texas Legislative Session, the law clarified that sex trafficking must be included in school district policy and trainings. The addition of children with significant cognitive disabilities were included and training on sexual abuse, human trafficking, and other maltreatment for superintendents and school board members were also required by law. And now we will unpack superintendents and school board requirements. As a result of the 86th Texas Legislative Session, House Bill 403 passed requiring training for members of the Board of Trustees and superintendents regarding sexual abuse, human trafficking, and other maltreatment of children. School board members are required to receive one hour of training every two years. This had an effective date of May 1st, 2020, but has been waived due to the COVID-19 pandemic until January 31st, 2021. Superintendents are required to have 2.5 hours of training every five years. This had an effective date of August, 2020. And a special note, an individual who holds a superintendent certificate that is renewed on or after January 1st, 2020-21 must complete at least 2.5 hours of training every five years on identifying and reporting potential victims of sexual abuse, human trafficking, and other maltreatment of children in accordance with TEC 21.054H. And for the purposes of this subsection, other maltreatment has a meaning assigned by the Human Resource Code 42.002. For more information regarding school board trustee training, please visit the TEA School Board Trustee Training webpage. On this webpage, individuals will also be able to search for training eligible providers. You'll see in the yellow arrow, it um, highlights the sexual abuse, human trafficking, and other maltreatment of children. And you'll have a link to registered providers and authorized providers in your area. So some key actions for success. Ensure that professional development training includes the following. Factors indicating a child is at risk for sexual abuse, trafficking, or other maltreatment. Warning signs indicating a child may be a victim of sexual abuse, trafficking, or other maltreatment. Internal procedures for seeking assistance for a child who is at risk for sexual abuse, trafficking, or other maltreatment, including referral to a school counselor, a social worker, or another mental health professional. Ensure professional development training also includes techniques for reducing a child's risk for sexual abuse, trafficking, or other maltreatment, and information on community organizations that have relevant research-based programs that are able to provide training or other education for district and open enrollment charter school staff, students, and parents. So some 85th and 86th legislative session highlights. The 85th 
legislative session gave the Texas Education Agency the statutory authority to amend the commissioner rule to include the following, incorporate definitions to include trafficking of a child, requires additional reporting under certain circumstances, detail what must be included in school district policy addressing sexual abuse, trafficking, and other maltreatment of children, and describes the training requirements for new employees and employees not previously trained. This commissioner rule had an effective date of November 2019. In addition, the 86th Texas Legislative Session passed House Bill 111 regarding training concerning prevention techniques for and recognition of sexual abuse, trafficking, and other maltreatment of children, including the sexual abuse, trafficking, and other maltreatment of children with significant cognitive disabilities must be provided to all new school district and open enrollment charter school employees and to existing school district and open enrollment charter school employees not previously trained. This training should also be in effect annually for again, all school district and open enrollment charter school staff. This particular law, this Texas Education Code, had an effective date of May 2019. And now we wanted to unpack some of the policy updates. The policy must be included in any informational handbook provided to students and parents and must address the following. Methods for increasing staff, student, and parent awareness of issues regarding sexual abuse, trafficking, and other forms of maltreatment of children, including prevention techniques and knowledge of warning signs indicating a student may be a victim. Actions a student who is a victim of sexual abuse, trafficking, and other maltreatment should take to obtain assistance and intervention and available counseling options for students affected by sexual abuse, trafficking, or other maltreatment. Policy updates also include child abuse anti-victimization programs in elementary and secondary schools consisting of age-appropriate research-based prevention designed to promote self-protection and prevent sexual abuse and trafficking. Some key actions for success. Review the 19 TAC Chapter 61 Commissioner Rule and begin to develop policies, procedures, and guidance for staff, students, and parents in alignment with the new requirements. Identify and map both school, community, and area resources available to support the implementation of training requirements and build community and agency partnerships to coordinate professional development trainings and support services for victims identified. And now we'll unpack the anti-victimization education. Texas Education Code and Commissioner Rule requirements state that school districts are required to provide child abuse anti-victimization programs in elementary and secondary schools age-appropriate research-based prevention designed to promote self-protection and prevent sexual abuse and trafficking. Please note, education programs for elementary students are not required to incorporate language about trafficking. High-quality programs to prevent child abuse and online exploitation are an age-appropriate way to prevent trafficking. So some considerations for implementation of prevention education. Prevention education may ultimately result in disclosures of victimization. Ensure all staff are properly trained in responding to suspected abuse before implementation of prevention education. And once again, program content should be age appropriate for the targeted grade level. Prevention education programs for elementary students are not required to incorporate language about trafficking. Prevention education programs for middle and high school students may begin to incorporate language on trafficking and exploitation. 
Prevention education programs should equip students with knowledge and skills to recognize risk, avoiding dangerous situations, seeking help, prevention of victimization and perpetration. And ask yourself, who will implement on-campus prevention education programs? Would this be a campus counselor, teachers, or community partners? And be knowledgeable about local policies for parental notification of curriculum content, as well as broader strategies for increasing parental awareness of child abuse neglect, including human trafficking. So some key actions for success for prevention education is identify curriculum to utilize as part of an anti-victimization program. These programs equip students with the knowledge and skills to recognize risks, avoid dangerous situations, seek help, and prevent victimization or perpetration. Leverage existing prevention programming aimed at other forms of violence with common risk and protective factors. This can include child sexual abuse, sexual assault, dating violence, etc. And identify community resources that exist for child abuse and trafficking prevention, such as children's advocacy centers, traffic coalition, and sexual assault and family violence centers. And we wanted to give you an example of an organization who provides anti-victimization prevention education. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children is a leading nonprofit organization whose mission is to help find missing children, reduce child sexual exploitation, and prevent child victimization. They have two great resources. The first one listed is NetSmarts. This provides parents and or guardians with critical information about what risks children face online through a variety of free resources available for viewing and downloading at home. The other resource is NetSmart Kids, where young children can watch videos and find activities in a safe online environment learn how to be safer online in a fun and developmentally appropriate format. And now we'll unpack protocol and procedure requirements. So LEAs have several responsibilities regarding procedures and policies in place to prevent school age children from being victims of human trafficking. These responsibilities include develop and clearly articulate district or school-wide policies, develop protocols for identifying and reporting suspected school-age victims, develop a procedure similar to the procedures used in cases of sexual assault or reporting child abuse. And here we have an example protocol for mandated reporting. Now we do understand that the protocol and procedures might look differently for a small and rural school versus a large urban school. It also might look differently for districts who have their own campus police or maybe a resource officer. But first and foremost, if the student is in immediate danger, contact 911. Step one, involve an on-campus counselor or administrator for possible investigation without asking the student to repeat his or her story beyond the initial outcry. Educators must report suspected abuse immediately. This does not require administrative sign-off or approval. Step two, submit a report to the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services online or by contacting 1-800-252-5400. Step three, assess possible campus impacts such as recruitment, harassment, and involvement of other students in safety issues and report to DFPS or appropriate law enforcement investigation unit. Please note TEC 38.004 states that the policy must provide for cooperation with law enforcement, child abuse investigations without the consent of the child's parents, if necessary, including investigations by the Department of Family and Protective Services. Step four, 
The staff member, if not a counselor or administrator, can report their concern to an administrator or counselor if they feel comfortable doing so. Step five, if a trafficking survivor's caregiver reaches out for support, work with them to find solutions to academic and behavioral challenges experienced at school. And step six, offer a student a referral to appropriate counseling or social, or excuse me, or social services, and set up regular contact with students and periodically check on their status. And now we'll unpack the educator training requirements. The training must include factors indicating a child is at risk for sexual abuse, trafficking, or other maltreatment, warning signs indicating a child may be a victim of sexual abuse, trafficking, or other maltreatment, and internal procedures for seeking assistance for a child who is at risk for sexual abuse, trafficking, or other maltreatment, including referral to a school counselor, a social worker, or another mental health professional. Annual training for new employees and employees not previously trained are mandatory. The training must also include techniques for reducing a child's risk for sexual abuse, trafficking, or other maltreatment, information on community organizations that have relevant research-based programs that can provide training or other education for school districts or other open enrollment charter school staff, students, and parents, and information on children with significant cognitive disabilities. Some key actions for success regarding training requirements. Incorporate language to include trafficking of a child in current child abuse reporting policies. Provide training for all districts and open enrollment charter employees through in-person, group, or online training modules. Provide a standalone human trafficking training in addition to the child abuse recognition and reporting training and ensure all training on child abuse and trafficking must now include information about children with significant cognitive disabilities. And now we'll discuss some resources. The TEA has a child abuse prevention webpage. We are constantly updating this webpage with information and resources, so please feel free to go check out this particular webpage. In addition, TEA also has a human trafficking webpage. There is a contact information box where you can submit your questions or even share your stories at preventinghumantrafficking at tea.texas.org. The TEA also created guidance for child abuse, neglect, and human trafficking awareness and reporting during COVID-19 please visit the TEA COVID-19 webpage and click the special populations link. It'll take you to the highly mobile and at-risk FAQ and guidance where you will be able to access the child abuse, neglect, and human trafficking awareness and reporting FAQ. The Texas Education Agency has also created a module on the Texas Gateway for the prevention and awareness of school-age human trafficking. This module is free of charge and no login is required. It consists of 11 units that takes about one hour completion time. This Texas Gateway module is to be used in coordination with existing child abuse prevention and mandatory training. LEAs may use other training and or collaborate with local community partners to meet the updated training requirements. The Texas Gateway module should go live and available in October of 2020. TEA has recently collaborated with the Children's Advocacy Centers of Texas to give the No Go Tell student posters a fresh look. According to the Texas Education Code and the Texas Administrative Code, all campuses are required to post the child abuse hotline on an 11 by 17 poster in English and Spanish, post in at least one high traffic area. This could be a hallway above a water fountain, a gym, a locker room, 
counselor's office, etc., again in both English and Spanish, and posted at student eye level. Please visit the TEA Child Abuse Prevention Overview webpage to download both of these posters. We'd also like to highlight Governor Abbott's Child Sex Trafficking Team. The Child Sex Trafficking Team Regional Administrators can help the ESCs understand human trafficking and existing efforts and services in their region, provide information on screening and training. You'll see a list of regional administrators and their contact information. To find out what regional administrator serves your area, please see this map. To increase awareness among educators, the Governor's Child Sex Trafficking Team, in collaboration with Three Strands Global Foundation, is offering Texas schools free access to an online human trafficking and prevention education program. There's a three-part online training module that includes Human Trafficking 101, an introduction to child exploitation, Human Trafficking 102, Understanding Vulnerability in Trauma, and Human Trafficking 103, Red Flags, Reporting, and Implementing Prevention Education. Please visit Protect Texas for more information and to register for not only these online training modules, but also for anti-victimization prevention education. In addition, the Texas Education Agency has collaborated with the Children's Advocacy Centers of Texas. The Children Advocacy Centers of Texas often partner directly with school districts to offer required training for educators and anti-victimization programs for students. The CACs can help meet the new training requirement for school board members either per by providing the training directly or by partnering with an ESC and providing a CAC guest speaker to facilitate the training. For general information on CACs or child sexual abuse prevention, please contact CAC Texas. And to find your local CAC, visit the web link below. The Department of Family and Protective Services offers guidance on reporting suspected abuse or neglect of a child, a guide for professionals. This guide helps professional reporters through online or hotline reporting and how to identify abuse or neglect. Videos and other resources are provided to assist professionals in navigating the DFPS system. For further training needs or questions, please contact the CPS Community Engagement Specialist in your area. Thank you for attending this training. For more information, visit the TEA Human Trafficking Resource webpage or email preventinghumantrafficking at tea.texas.gov.